Hi, I'm Dr. Michael Bishop. I'm director of the David and Etta Jonas Center for Cellular Therapy at the University of Chicago, and I'm at 2024 Annual Meeting of the American Society of Hematology here in San Diego. So I have the uh, pleasure and honor of chairing a, a session on late complications. I think what's an underappreciated aspect is the long-term care that is necessary for patient with CAR T cells. And, and again, uh, one of my areas of interest is working with community oncologists. I want to see this technology brought forward to as many people as possible and the uh, inclusion as of the community oncology practice is imperative. And that's just not the referring physicians, but also their APPs and their pharmacists, and most importantly, their nurses. And because the majority of their, um, there's going to be near their home. And so part of this is we worry about this acute toxicities of neurologic toxicities and cytokine release syndrome, but there can be late toxicities. And when I refer to late toxicities, this is more than three months after they receive their CAR T cells. And so probably the, the biggest thing that I emphasize to my patients is that they have a compromised immune system because one, they received lymphodepleting chemotherapy, which takes out both their B cells and their T cells. And so that leaves them extremely vulnerable to viral infections. As a matter of fact, viral infections is the number one cause of death other than recurrent disease after CAR T cell therapy. So that's very, very important. And sometimes that immune reconstitution takes up to a year. And if you think about it with CAR T cells, what are they do? What are they targeting? They're targeting proteins that are associated with B cells and by association because B cells become plasma cells that take out plasma cells. And when you take out plasma cells, plasma cells produce immunoglobulins. So those are waters protecting your body, for, usually from viral infections. And so hypogammaglobulinemia can be a significant problem. It's seen in excess of 40% and about 20% of patients may actually need intravenous immunoglobulin replacement to help them boost their immune system to protect them from that. So that's one aspect of infection. The other thing is late cytopenias. Uh, and when I would talk to uh, cytopenias, it can be low neutrophils, anemia, and thrombocytopenia. And we can actually see this in about 20% of patients, and it can be isolated, which is kind of unique. You could just have thrombocytopenia alone, you have neutropenia alone, you have anemia alone. Um, but the thing, if you think about the neutrophils are down, so that you've got, you don't have B cells, you don't have T cells, you don't have neutrophils, it's going to have a higher risk of infection. And that's where the community oncologist and his or her team play such an important role as well as the caregiver that's um, participating in the patient's care once they receive CAR T cell therapy. Another important aspect, which was really highlighted probably at last year, Ash, it was made buzz, is secondary cancers. And everybody, you know, now all of the CAR T cells have a black box warning relative to the risk of T cell leukemias and lymphomas. And this was found, it's not really been, it's primarily been seen with CD19 cars, um, and, but there is this inherent risk because CAR T cell construct could insert in a bad place in the T cell. And so they were seeing both the uh, T cell leukemias and lymphomas. But the thing I, I really want to emphasize in regard to that, so when you take all, if they, when they look very, very closely at that, at, at all the commercial products that have been uh, administered and they and all of these are reported the incidence of that is 0.1 percent you know so because a lot of patients come I don't want to get a t-cell leukemia and look uh, so I don't make light of it it's just the societies which I belong to American Society of Hematology American Society of Transplant and Cellular Therapy put a position paper they still yes this is a inherent risk tiny but it doesn't it, the benefits far outweigh that risk. However, I want to make one emphasis that the incidence of secondary cancers overall is about 5%. So you got 0.1% versus 5%. So I think of, again, relative to late complications, we need to monitor because these patients go through lots of fire therapy, which makes them vulnerable to secondary malignancies, particularly myeloid malignancies like myelodysplastic syndrome and acute myeloid leukemia. So they need continued monitoring 
for that as well. So if you take those together, infection, late site opinion, secondary cancers, these are the things that we need to continue to monitor in the community and report those outcomes so that we can inform patients better about not only the great benefits of CAR T cell therapy, but also potential toxicity.